so I want to ramble for just a few minutes of your time on conspiracy theories. And uh, this isn't going to be a very in-depth vlog. I'm not prepared for one, but um, I do want to talk a little bit about conspiracy theories, so I hope you enjoy this vlog. I know most of the time when we think of conspiracy theories, we think of this. I was told by a genetic engineer about a project they were on in England once, and I never told the story on air because it's so fantastical. Oh, God. They had in tanks people with gills, and they were little babies, and they were in there just gulping, clawing at the sides. You see a turtle at the zoo, and it wants out, and you feel for it. They got humanoids crossed with fish and stuff. I mean, we are screwed, people. I mean, do you understand that? But that's not what I'm talking about. So let's get into this video and I uh, hope you enjoy it and I hope you like and subscribe. Today, I'm gonna briefly discuss a topic <clears throat> that I'm kind of turning full circle on myself. Um, I used to be the most anti-conspiracy theory person uh, known to man. I mean, <clears throat> as soon as I heard someone talking about conspiracy theories, I would shut down. I mean, I just wrote that off as hogwash and I didn't want to hear the rest of it. But here lately, just everything going on in the world, in our country, um, it's starting to seem like probably these things weren't hogwash that they were probably true um at least some version of it you know even the ones that know or believe that a conspiracy theory uh is true they don't have all the information to give you exactly what happened they just know that what you're being fed isn't true um there is a <clears throat> presidential candidate um, on the Democratic, Democratic side, uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., obviously the son of RFK. Um, I've been listening to interviews of him. He's a very independently minded man and uh, probably stands very little chance, unfortunately, of winning the election or at least or even getting his party's bid for president uh just because it's hard to it's hard to unseat a sitting president anyway but it's especially hard to unseat a sitting president of your own party um but i've been listening to him talk and i saw a town hall meeting with him and he was treated extremely unfairly. He was treated like an absolute nut. And they kept calling him a conspiracy theorist. And he, you know, as gentlemanly as possible, uh, explained, he was, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, you know. He was like, <clears throat> he was explaining things in a very calm, reasonable manner. But they want to throw that label of conspiracy theorist on you to make you look crazy. So, what they try to say he's anti, he's an anti-vaxxer. He's absolutely not an anti-vaxxer. He just thinks that uh, vaccines aren't tested the way they need to be tested. Uh, in fact, he. He begs people for proof that they are. Is that vaccines should be tested like other medicines. They should be safety tested. And unfortunately, vaccines are not safety tested. They're not, there's, in the, of the 72 vaccine doses now mandated, essentially mandated, they're recommended, but they're really mandated. For American children, none of them, not one, has ever been subject to a pre-licensing placebo-controlled trial. Yes, they have. No. Yes, they have. 
OK, let, let me just say something. Dr. Fauci and many other people for many years said this. And yet Bobby Kennedy, when he says that, is wrong. So I met with Dr. Fauci in 2016, you know, and I agreed to go on Trump's Vaccine Safety Commission. And I was with Aaron Siri and uh, Lynn Redwood and uh, a, a number of other people. And we said to him, can you show us one test from any vaccine? Pre-licensing safety test. And he said, uh, I'll send it to you. I can't find one now. He never did. So we sued him. We sued H Aaron Siri and I sued HHS. And after a year of litigation and stonewalling, they said that they could not provide a single safety study for any vaccine that is on the childhood schedule, pre-licensing safety study. So anybody who wants to read that can go to my web, to the Children's Health Defense website and you can read HHS's admission that not a single one has ever been safety tested pre-licensing. Uh even the FDA, the FDA claims that they're tested, but they're not tested to an extent that would prove that there's no long lasting effects on these things. And uh, <clears throat> if any medicine is gonna be put out there, it should be tested for years to make sure that it's safe. Um, and one thing, you know, I'm unsure about, I mean, I have a child, I have two children on the autism spectrum. Um, and RF, uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. believes that vaccines can cause autism. And, you know, I'm on the fence about that. I, I used to get really mad when I heard that, but you know, there might be some weight to it to some extent. Um, but it could be also another number of things. It could be genetics, like they say it is. It could be stuff in our food and in our water and things like that. Who knows? Uh, but just because you can think for yourself and not go along with whoever's trying to drag you into their way of thinking doesn't mean that you're a crazy kook. It just means that you're somebody that can analyze and critically think about things for yourself. Um, I'm really a big fan of Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Uh, and under the right circumstances, I might vote for him. Uh, he seems honest at least, and that's hard to find. Um, but this isn't a political vlog. Uh, watching him, because you're talking about a man that his father was RFK, who was assassinated, supposedly by Saran Saran. This man named Saran Saran. Uh, his uncle, President John F. Kennedy was assassinated supposedly by Lee Harvey Oswald. And even RFK Jr. said, you know, for years I towed the line. I said, you know, obviously it was Lee Harvey Oswald. Obviously it was Saran Saran. He was like, but, he was like, I've seen some evidence that normal people don't see, you know, uh, some higher level in evidence and intelligence. And he was like, I don't believe either one of them. And, uh, you know, I can respect a guy like that. And it takes a lot of guts to say stuff like that, especially when some members of your own family will disagree with you. So, um, but if you think that your own government that is the only real superpower, I mean, I know they call China and Russia superpowers. America is the superpower. Um, this is the same country who, whose own intelligence agency came up with Operation Northwoods, where they had planned to attack their a town in their own country 
to make it look like it was another country so that they could attack that country in a just war, even though it was actually the CIA attacking the village. Now, it never happened, ironically, because President John F. Kennedy said, of course, we're not going to do something like that. But, uh, you know, when that is common knowledge, that's not just hearsay. Um, conspiracy theories, you know, they're only called conspiracy theories because what we're fed is what we're supposed to believe. Anybody that detracts from that is a kooky nut who's a conspirator. Uh, now, 9-11, all that stuff, could it have been an inside job? Shoot, I don't know. You know, I don't, I don't personally believe that 9-11 was an inside job. What's that? Yeah, audience? this is the problem with live television. Uh, I guess it gets around that if you're on live, then then the nutcases, yeah, and you are a nutcase, Building 7. <laughs> yeah, you know what that's all about? Of all the things I've said, and believe me, I've said a lot of things, as you all know, that could get my head on a block. The one that they protest about out here is the people who think that the World Trade Center mm. was a controlled explosion. Yeah, you yeah. see, in that instance, I'm actually defending President Bush. <laughs> I don't think President Bush brought down the World Trade Center. And cows disagree with me. <laughs> uh, I do believe the flight that crashed in Pennsylvania didn't wasn't brought down by the passengers revolting. Now, the passengers might have revolted, but I honestly believe that that plane was shot down. Imagine the kind of world we would face if the people who bombed the death hall in Mosul or the people who did the bombing in Spain or the people who attacked the United States in New York and shot down the plane over Pennsylvania and attacked the Pentagon. And probably quite rightly shot down. I mean... The World Trade Center had been hit. Uh, the Pentagon had been hit. So they say the most likely destination or target that that plane had was probably the Capitol building, if not the White House. So uh, I think logically they probably shot it down. Uh, it's widely known that uh, Dick Cheney and Donald Rumsfeld uh, along with President Bush approved that the planes that any planes that looked suspicious after this time be shot down uh, because you're not just talking about the lives of the people in the plane, it's the lives of the people on the ground at these targets um, so what's haunting the hearse today is conspiracy theories what is our government wanting us to believe that isn't true? So one of my favorite things on earth is Bigfoot. You know, I talk about Bigfoot all the time. I mean, he's my number one cryptid. Uh, he's, what, he's what inspired this channel. Do I think for one second that our government is not absolutely aware of Bigfoot? I think they're completely aware of it. Why do they not want him known to us? I have no idea. But, um, and of course we just had a big, uh, Senate, I guess, investigation on uh, Senate hearings on aliens and UFOs. It's starting to look like maybe our government has 
at least known or had possibly had contact, but at least known about alien life from another planet. If you believe we have crashed craft, uh, stated earlier, do we have the bodies of the pilots who piloted this craft? As I've stated publicly already in my News Nation interview, uh, biologics came with some of these recoveries. Yeah. Um, were they, I guess, human or non-human biologics? Non-human, and that was the assessment of people uh, with direct knowledge on the program I talked to that are currently still on the program. And was this documentary evidence, this video, photos, eyewitness, like how would that be determined? The specific documentation I would have to talk to you in a skiff about. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, okay, so, and, and you may or may not be able to answer my last question, and maybe we get into a skiff at the next hearing that we have, but who in the government either, what agency, sub-agency, what contractors, who should be called into the next hearing about UAPs, either in a public setting or even in a private setting? And, and you probably can't name names, but what agencies or organizations, contractors, et cetera, do we need to call in to get these questions answered, whether it's about funding, what programs are happening, and what's out there? I can give you a specific cooperative and hostile witness list of specific individuals uh, that were in those. And, and how soon can we get that list? I'm happy to provide that to you after the hearing. Super. Thank you. And I yield back. Uh, which has been talked about for way longer than I've been around. And I just turned 40 years old. So way longer than that. Uh, people have suspected that the government has been aware, has had contact with alien life. So, yeah. Conspiracy theories. So that does it for today's vlog of what's haunting the hearse. I really hope you enjoyed it. I hope it wasn't too rambly for you, but I think we covered a lot of information in it. Uh, so yeah, we'll see you next week and please like and subscribe. Well, actually we won't see you next week. This Friday, obviously the Friday vlog. Uh, I think it's going to be a good one. Um, but like and subscribe and keep tuning in for our videos. Thank you.